On Pentecost Sunday in 1738, John Wesley's younger brother, 30-year-old Charles, was deathly ill and suffering from a near-fatal case of pneumonia. More significantly, Charles was suffering spiritually from a severe bout with doubt and a need for assurance of his salvation. And it is reported, lying on his deathbed and slipping in and out of consciousness, Charles noticed a, a woman named Mrs. Musgrave, a family friend, enter his room. And she said to him, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I tell you, arise and believe, and you shall be healed of your infirmities. And then the woman left the room. At that precise moment, Charles awoke from his slumber and felt what would, he would later describe as a strange palpitation in his heart. And miraculously, his pneumonia began to clear and he was able uh, to claim for the first time a solid assurance of his salvation in Christ. Aloud, Charles uttered the words, I believe, I do believe. And when he later saw Mrs. Musgrave and he asked her why she came into the room and to say what she had said. She had no recollection of the event. It is no surprise Charles held the day of Pentecost with such high regard. For him, Pentecost became more than a liturgical observance marked with red pyramids on the communion table and hung down from the pulpit or the stole resting upon my shoulders. Pentecost is more than a historical story of an agricultural festival or the giving of the law to the Israelites. Well, the tale embedded into the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, complete with the special effects of a violent rushing wind and tongues of fire. Pentecost marked the moment when Charles began more, or became more than a professing Christian, but a committed follower of Jesus as well, guided and shaped by the Holy Spirit. He considered Pentecost to be the stage in a believer's journey of grace in which the Holy Spirit transformed that individual more and more into the likeness of Christ, nurturing the capacity to love God and love neighbor. For Charles, Pentecost was about being empowered by the wind of the Holy Spirit to live and to grow in a life of holiness. A prolific writer of roughly 10,000 hymns, he is credited with such beloved hits as, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. And Christ the Lord is risen today, and hark the herald angels sing, to name only a few. And in a song given the simple title, Hymn One, Charles offers these lyrics. The purchased comforter is given. For Jesus is returned to heaven to claim and then the grace in part. Our day of Pentecost is come. And God vouchsafes to fix his home and every poor expecting heart. This morning, the line, our day of Pentecost is come, swirls in my soul. In her book, Home by Another Way, Barbara Brown Taylor reminds us that from the beginning of time, 
The ancient air just keeps recirculating, which means that every time any of us breathes, we breathe stardust left over from the creation of the world. We breathe uh, brontosaurus breath and pterodactyl breath. We breathe air that has circulated through the rainforests of Kenya and the air that has turned yellow with sulfur over Mexico City. We breathe the same air that Plato breathed and Mozart and Michelangelo. And if I follow Barbara Brown Taylor's logic, the breath that Jesus breathed on his disciples, the breath that filled the, the, uh, the 120 in the house of Pente or on Pentecost flows freely and can fill our lungs with vitality today. And along with Charles, we too can proclaim our day of Pentecost is come. Our relationship with God does not end at the moment of our conversion or when we take our membership vows. The First United Methodist Church in Westfield does not exist for the purpose of simply adding names to the membership roles. We exist to serve God wholeheartedly and to transform the world with God's justice and righteousness. Pentecost is important because it calls us to be more committed to, to Christ and to strive to go deeper in our relationship with him than mere lip service or superficial piety. William Willimon, a retired bishop, once said, Pentecost didn't just happen, it is happening. The Pentecost we read with the litany of strange names and various languages spoken happened over 2,000 years ago. However, Pentecost continues to happen before our very eyes. You know, long ago, the prophet Zechariah exhorted us, do not despise the day of small things. The second chapter of Acts tells of a small group of 120 believers who came together in the middle of the Roman Empire. And as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they turned the world upside down. And today, three individuals in a community of 4,464 residents are poised to do the same. Church, our day of Pentecost is come. Years ago, there was a United Methodist pastor down in Florida and he encouraged his congregation to hold days of Pentecost. Not just a Sunday for Pentecost, days in the plural, days of Pentecost. To hold these days at various times of the year beyond Pentecost Sunday so that the church has created time and space to encourage people to respond to the Holy Spirit's calling. Multiple dates offer people an opportunity to become more diligent in their walk with the Lord or to renew their commitment to practice a spiritual discipline such as praying or reading scripture or abstaining from certain foods or forms of media. These multiple days of Pentecost provide a springboard to relaunch people into short-term missions in their community and beyond. And in just another week or so, the church heads into its longest season called Ordinary Time. There are no Christian holidays during Ordinary Time. But what if during this Ordinary Time, individuals or a whole community planted days of Pentecost somewhere in the dog days of summer? 
How might you or the wider church respond to the invisible yet undeniable power and promise of the Holy Spirit at work in and among us? The church is already claimed today as Pentecost Sunday. And we have three individuals who are on the verge of answering the Spirit's invitation to deepen their commitment to discipleship. To shape their perspectives, priorities, and behaviors around the person of Jesus Christ. And collectively, Ariana and Aiden and Wesley can claim our day of Pentecost is come. And for the rest of us gathered here, we do not merely sit in our pew overhearing what will happen up here in just a few moments. So take advantage and listen to how the Holy Spirit wants to breathe new life in you. So as you sit there, breathe in and breathe out. Allow the Holy Spirit that filled the early church to fill your soul. You see, my prayer is that today will be the first of many days of Pentecost. I offer this to you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said.